Oh, hello. What's up, boys and girls? Muzza Fuzza here, playing some Diablo 3 beta once again today. I'm on my Witch Doctor, my level 13 Witch Doctor. We got him maxed out already. And uh, I'm hanging out with my zombie dogs and my Templar. And today we're going to be doing a passive skills guide for the Witch Doctor. And by now you guys probably know the deal. I'm going to hit S and open up my skills menu. Up here we've got my active skills. Down here we've got my passive skills. And uh, the passive skills are what I'm going to be talking about in this video today. So I'm going to open up the menu already, and it looks like we've got 3, 6, 9, 12, 15, 16, 17 total passive skills for the Witch Doctor, which is a different number from, I think usually the other classes only had 16, but we've actually got a broken one down here. Take a look at this. It says, Won't Translate Powers Witch Doctor Passive Grave Injustice Var Stats and Description. Um, so I won't be going over this one today. I'll be going over the other 16. Uh, this must be some sort of a glitch in the matrix. The developers haven't quite fixed it yet, um, but I'm guessing it's called Grave Injustice because that's what uh, the little weird stats say it is. Um, but on these other ones, I'm going to be going over all the different passive skills for the Witch Doctor and telling you their pros and cons and what I think about them and uh, which ones I would use playing my Witch Doctor. And I'm going to go ahead and zoom in on my Witch Doctor by pressing I for inventory. And you can see I'm hanging out. I've, uh, I've got a lot of good gear. I've got a rare belt and everything else is a magic item. Lots of gold, lots of DPS. I've got a one-handed axe and a shield. And uh, I'm hanging out. Look at my zombie dogs. They're awesome. I can actually get a new pair. I guess it's not a pair. A new trio of zombie dogs just by pressing one. And uh, my other skills that I have on are pretty cool as well. These are my fire bats which are badass and you've got my fire bomb which is cool too and then uh, lastly we've got spirit walk let's see if this works boom spirit walk so I leave my body for a couple seconds and run around like a madman but uh, without further ado I think we should jump straight into the passive skills guide so let's do it the first passive for witch doctors is called jungle fortitude reduces all damage taken by you and your pets by 20% to be one with the jungle is to take what you need and endure what you must. Uh, basically, if you want to take 20% less damage for you and your pets, that's a pretty good defensive one to start off with, give you some more fortitude. But me personally, you guys know I'm all about the damage. That's all I really care about is just doing heaps and heaps of damage. I don't really like to play support characters or characters that are tanky. Uh, so that's not one that I would use. Moving on to the second passive, it's called Vermin. You're a plague of toad, corpse, spiders, Locust Swarm and Fire Bats abilities do 20% more damage. You think the creatures are nuisance, but they are legion and you are alone. What will you say when they come for you? Sira the Weaver. So basically all your vermin, your toads, your spiders, your locust swarm, and your fire bats do 20% more damage. And this one is pretty useful if you want to do a lot more damage because I'm, I'm constantly finding myself using fire bats just because it's so awesome and I have the mana regen that I can pretty much cast it indefinitely. I can literally cast this spell for like 45 seconds straight before I run out of mana. Um, so if you want 20% more damage out of all your little creatures, you can use that one. Moving on to Circle of Life. Whenever an enemy dies within 12 yards, there's a 5% chance that a zombie dog will automatically emerge. The range of this effect is increased by items that increase your gold pickup radius. The heads hanging in the village had their eyes sewn shut with thick thread. Whatever wicked magic held the frightful hound beast together was considerably stronger. Abner Lockridge. So this one's pretty goddamn cool. If you kill somebody within 12 yards of you, there's a 5% chance that a zombie dog will just burst out of its anus and uh, be birthed into the world. And I don't know if this stacks. I don't know if it makes your zombie dogs stack up so you can get more and more zombie dogs. But that would be awesome if you could just have unlimited zombie dogs from killing people. Um, but as of right now, I think the max zombie dogs you can get is 3. So if you guys uh, can confirm or deny that you can get more than that with this passive, uh, that would be cool because I haven't tested it myself yet. Moving on to the fourth one, and the one that I've got on right now, Spiritual Attunement. Maximum mana is increased by 20%, regenerate 2% of your maximum mana per second. Mana is the fuel you use to cast offensive and defensive skills. The pool is deep and still, cool and silent. Now a fountain, now a whirlpool. Drink and be renewed. Runic carvings on the shallow stone. The reason I'm using this one is because... I have way more mana, I have 20% more mana, and my regeneration is insane. Regenerates 2% of my maximum mana per second, so I never fi find myself running uh, Oom or out of mana. If you're a noob and you don't know what Oom means, you need to learn to play PC games. PC games with mana. I've been, I've been hearing about mana since back in like my World of Warcraft days, quite a few years ago. 
Uh, but we're going to move on to the fifth passive skill, Gruesome Feast. Whenever you are healed by a health globe, gain 10% of your maximum mana and 10% intelligence for 10 seconds. The intelligence bonus can stack up to five times. We are all connected in life and death. Partake the spirits of the dead and flourish like the jungle that grows wild after the fire. Shadewalker Zunimasa. Zunim Zunimasa? I don't know how to pronounce that. Whatever. Um, this one's pretty cool. Gives you a five stack of a buff that increases your intelligence by 10%. Uh, and intelligence is what gives the wizard and the witch doctor more damage. So this could be a big damage boost if you're constantly stacking by it uh, by picking up health globes. But I find myself not picking up health globes too often uh, just because I'm already so well geared. But I think this could be pretty useful and it's a pretty unique passive that gives you a, a unique buff. So pretty awesome. I like it. Um, and if you get five stacks, that could be 50% more intelligence and 50% more maximum mana, which is pretty awesome. Moving on to Blood Ritual, 15% of mana costs are paid with life. In addition, you'd regenerate 2% of your maximum life per second. To give of oneself, is there any greater gift? Final words spoken at the Ritual of Blood. So, 15% of your mana costs are paid with life instead. So if you're not worried about dying, if you think you can give up that extra chunk of life, this makes you pay for your spells with uh, a little bit of life rather than mana and actually gives you regeneration uh, of 2% of your life per second. So pretty good. Once again, uh, probably increases your survivability, but doesn't really increase your damage output too much. So not one that I would uh, be too fond of. Moving on to the seventh one, Bad Medicine. Whenever you deal poison damage to an enemy, their damage is reduced by 30% for 3 seconds. Their mastery of paralytic agents is astounding. The jungle, they say, provides ample demonstration of its wonders. Abner Lockridge. Damn, these are tongue twisters to read. But uh, whenever you deal poison damage, their damage is reduced by 30% for 3 seconds. This is probably obviously pretty good for PvP. If you're going to be spamming poison dart uh, against players in the arena, and you want to cut down their damage by 30% for 3 seconds, could be pretty useful. But I move on to Zombie Handler. You can have four zombie dogs out at once. The health of your zombie dogs and gargantua is, is increased by 60%. Damn. The dead are willing minions. Death to them is not unknown. Therefore, need not to be feared. And again, with the tongue twisters. That was really hard to read. I think I added an extra word in there, but whatever. You can have four zombie dogs. So you get one more extra zombie dog. And the health of your zombie dogs and your gargantuan zombie is increased by 60%, which is huge. Um, this is probably one that I would use because I'm such like a necromancer based character. I love to have my summoned people be really strong. And uh, later in the game you get a gargantuan zombie, which I can't wait for. That's going to be awesome. But having four zombie dogs would be uh, pretty useful as well because right now I've only got three. So that's pretty cool. Moving on to the ninth one, Pierce the Veil. All of your damage is increased by 20%, but your mana costs are increased by 30%. The spirits take their toll. Best be ready to pay. Shadewalker Zunimasa. Um, this one's awesome. 20% more damage for 30% more mana cost. If you stack this one, since you get it at level 20, you'll have two passive skills by then. You could stack this one with, a, with an increased damage output one that gives you more mana regen. Uh, like this one right here. And then, even though you have 30% more mana cost and 20% more damage, you would still have the mana regeneration to keep up with it. So that is pretty goddamn useful if you want 20% more damage out of your Witch Doctor. Moving on to Spirit Vessel. Reduces the cooldown of your Horrify, Spirit Walk, and Soul Harvest spells by 2 seconds. In addition, the next time you receive Fatal Damage, you automatically enter the Spirit Realm for 3 seconds and heal to 10% of your maximum life. This effect cannot occur more than once every 90 seconds. Everyone dies! Sometimes we must return to finish what we started. Dragon Ball Z style, bitches. Basically, this uh, gives you two seconds off your cooldowns of three of your abilities, but the best part about this passive is that if you take a fatal blow, if you should die when you take a fatal blow, uh, you'll actually enter the spirit realm for three seconds, which means you can move all around without getting touched, and uh, you go back to 10% of your maximum life. And it can't occur every more than once every 90 seconds, but that's still... Pretty goddamn awesome if you guys are going up against bosses and you accidentally wipe and take too much damage. You actually get kind of a second chance. So kind of good if you're doing like higher level stuff. I'm guessing this is going to be really useful for uh, higher difficulty dungeon runs like Nightmare and Hell Mode and stuff like that. Um, but it doesn't really increase your damage at all. But still, quite a cool effect. 
Moving on to Fetish Psychophants. That's a weird name. Whenever you cast a Physical Realm spell, you have a 3% chance to summon a dagger-wielding fetish to fight by your side for 60 seconds. The denizens of the unformed land are mischievous and drawn to power, always seeking to intrude upon our world, but too fickle to stay for long. Ah, uh, so I don't know what is up with these weird feet fetish things, but uh, they're just those little imp guys that come out of nowhere. They're these little green dudes that will uh, help you fight, and when you cast a physical realm spell, you'll have a 3% chance to summon one to fight for you with a dagger for 60 seconds. So kind of cool if you want to stack up a bunch of zombie dogs and gargantuans and then have a fetish psychophant at your side. You could get a, a pretty big posse of uh, things to fight for you on your witch doctor. So, pretty cool. Moving on to Rush of Essence. Spirit spells return 125% of their mana cost over 10 seconds. The spirit spells are Haunt, Horrify, Mass Confusion, Soul Harvest, Spirit Barrage, and Spirit Walk. All spirits must move onward if they wish to return to their origins. There is no going back. Um, pretty cool because using any spirit spell basically gives you more mana than before you use the spirit spell. So you can actually use your spirit spells to get mana back over 10 seconds. Uh, so that's pretty cool if you're running low on mana, but for now, uh, I don't think I would actually use that one because I don't use too many spirit spells other than Spirit Walk. That's the only one I've got on right now. Moving on. Vision Quest. Anytime you have four or more skills on cooldown, your mana regeneration is increased by 300%. You sense but do not see. Walk beside yourself in the unformed land. Walk until you find yourself again or wander lost forever. Chant of Ordeal. Uh, this is awesome if you're using really high cooldown spells because whenever four or more of them are on cooldown at the same time, your mana regeneration is just going to shoot up like a meth head. It's going to be crazy. Like you're, you're going to be full mana pretty much all the time. And right now I've got so much mana regeneration with the passive that I have on right now that I don't think I could ever run out of mana even if I tried. So uh, Vision Quest is just kind of an addition to that. Moving on to Fierce Loyalty. All your pets get 100% of the benefit from thorns and life regeneration items. Establish dominance. They will obey. So any of your pets, including zombies and fetishes and zombie dogs, they will uh, benefit from your thorns and your life regeneration items. So any uh, thorns items are items that uh, do damage to people when they're attacked. And then life regeneration items are obviously uh, life per second or whatever you want to call it, just regenerating life so that's pretty good if you want to uh, raise some loyal pets and have them never run out of life so you don't have to resummon them moving on to death trance reduces damage taken by 60 percent whenever you are below 25 percent of your maximum life so this is awesome this is basically keeping you from dying pretty much ever uh, when you get below a quarter of your life you're gonna take 60 percent less damage that's more than half the amount of damage shaved off than you would normally take. A soul anchored in this world will not easily drift to the next. And that quote doesn't really make sense to me, but whatever. And then we've got our broken one down here that I'm not really going to go over, but it's called Grave Injustice. I don't really know what it does. And our final passive skill for the Witch Doctor is called Tribal Rites. The cooldown of your fetish army, big bad voodoo, and hex abilities are reduced by 25%. Befriend those who come from the unformed land, and they will befriend you. Zuwadza of the tribe of the five hills. Um, this is basically just a cooldown reduction. It's it's pretty basic, 25% cooldown reduction on four different abilities, but they are your most powerful abilities, so that cooldown reduction could really come in handy. And by the time you're level 30, you have room for three passive skills to be activated at once, um, so that's probably one of the most useful ones. You guys, this has been Mazafuzz. I hope you guys are enjoying these guides. I uh, put a lot of work into them. I'm really excited about Diablo 3. I think it's going to be my number one played game when it finally comes out, uh, when they figure out a release date. They don't have a release date while I'm doing this commentary, but by the time this goes up, I don't know. So, if you enjoyed this video, support the video with likes, favorites, comments, all that good stuff. You guys know what helps me out. If you want to hit me up on Facebook or Twitter, the links to those are down below in the description. You can follow me on Twitter, like my Facebook page. I do all sorts of cool stuff over there as well. But this has been Muzzafuzz. I hope you guys enjoyed, and I will see you guys next time.